Well, let's get engaged now on the prospects for currencies. As we push into this new year, Nick Twidell of FP Markets is joining us to explain what he's expecting and any impact that we saw from the FOMC minutes on trading last night. Hey, Nick. Hello, happy new year. Happy new year to you. Um, look, the markets, at least equity markets, pretty much shrugged at those FOMC minutes. Uh, similar thing for currencies, yeah. really. We saw the, saw the dollar drop off, but that was probably on the back of a little bit of dollar appreciation over the few sessions ahead of it. Um, we're still pretty much trading in, in holiday ranges. There's a lot of whippy moves. Liquidity is still coming at a bit of a premium. Um, and I think we're looking for a little bit of fresh direction from where we're going. And as you were just saying, I think the currency market and every market is, you know, we're, we're stuck in this rock and a hard place situation, um, as is the Fed, as, as are most central banks and most governments. And I think it's going to be a fascinating 2023 moving ahead. But I, th I think one thing we are going to see is plenty of volatility. Exactly. And that's what currency traders are I mean, that's where you make your money. It is where we make our money, but we also want to, we want trends. Okay. And, and I think the problem we've got moving into 2023 in most of the majors and, and across the, uh, the crosses as well is that there's very little sign of a positive trend coming as we start into the new year. I think maybe 2022, we had that indication that, that we knew the Fed were going, to be, were going to be raising rates and they were going to be going fairly hard. And that worked very well. And the dollar did appreciate. Obviously, we had fluctuations as we moved, as we moved through the year. But we did see dollar appreciation on the whole over 2022. 2023, as you said, we, we, we already we've, from those minutes, we've seen the Fed's like, well, yeah, we're definitely going to be raising rates, mm -hmm. but how hard we go and how quickly we go is, is going to be, and how far we go, I suppose, looking at the last tweet, is going to be really dictated by data and how economies react to sort of what's still a new world order post-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the prospects here in Australia, where are you putting your faith? Are you putting it in the China reopening being positive for commodities, therefore positive for the Australian dollar? Or how do you see it? I, I think so, yeah. I think certainly for the Aussie dollar, that's going to be a major factor for us. We have to measure up how the Aussie is going to go against the US and how it's going to go against the crosses. And, and I think we are going to see volatility. And funny enough, the Aussie has actually probably been one of the, the few majors that it is moving, but it's been very, very quiet, really within the ranges for the last few months. Um, I think we will need strong indications out of China and, and how lasting that recovery will be and how strong that recovery will be as well. I think they're the, the key points. We're getting good short term moves on the back of hearing that China's coming back and we've seen coal bans pulled back, et cetera, et cetera. But how much that leads to extensive China growth is going to be a real big factor for the Aussie dollar coming into 2023. Now, um what about the fact that we've got Europe? Uh, we know that the ECB is planning to raise rate, um, rates further, uh, as is the US Central Bank. We just don't know how much. But that's sort of lacking the same amount of clarity from the ECB, correct? That's exactly right. Yeah. So I think, once again, it's going to come back to data. And, and I think this is where we're going to see that volatility in currencies. Is We might see some inflation data come in a lot stronger, while at the same time, we're seeing strong signs of recession coming through. So mm -hmm. they really are in, they really are in a tough place. And to be fair, they've put themselves in a tough place. Yeah. Um, and from currency traders, we've got to look and, and, and be very careful where we choose our, our marks. So if you look at the chart here, like we've seen I suppose consolidation at these high um, sort of yearly yearly high or not yearly high sort of multi-month highs where we go from here will come down a lot to that interest rate differentials that we will get from central banks and we will get from data so I think the first few big data points both from Europe and from the US over the next month or two is going to be really key to see whether we see a trend established for the first quarter or first two quarters of the year. Well the BOJ was the shocker to end 2022 yep. Is it fair of me to say that the yen is still sort of trying to, you know, figure find, out what exactly I, I is going so. on? I think so. I think it's trying to find its feet. Yeah. yeah. So I think the initial reaction was great. We've started to see movement from the BOJ. Let's, let's get on board this yen move. And it's going back to 115, 110. Mm -hmm. There's been a bit of bit of realization of how this can really work and how it how the fair value comes into the yen and and on the crosses as well so i think that's given an added bit of extra spice to the markets that we haven't had for a long time in yen yen markets and that's why we had such a great move in dollar yen over 2022 um i think it's really difficult to call these things now because we've had i mean there's that yen chart like you look it was just one-way traffic really for most of 2022 and all the way up to the 150s now we're back 20 20 big figures low i mean yeah. they're 
they're great moves for currencies. So we're, we're seeing some really good moves. It's very choppy at the moment. Yen's one of the highest traded currencies over the holiday period because Japan, uh -huh. Japan's normally in when a lot of other people aren't. But, but it's been very whippy and there's been some, some sharp moves. Um, I think there's going to be some really interesting moves in, in the yen. I think we're looking at, you know, in dollar yen in particular, we're looking at the Fed versus the BOJ. And mm -hmm. now there, there is a little bit of a battle in interest rate differentials. And, and we will start looking at, say, Japanese numbers a little bit more intensely than we did before. I was looking at factory activity yesterday. Yeah. And it's, it's something that we used to sort of go, OK, those numbers, yeah, they're unexpected. Particularly but it's not when it came to the... Japanese inflation, you're like, oh, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what's going to do to the BOJ? Yeah. Nothing. So now we've got that added dimension, which is great for, for currency traders and probably for the, for the markets around the world. So it's going to be interesting dynamics that come through over 2023. And, and, and it's a change for us again. OK, but in the short term, we do have non-farm payrolls to look forward to. We so do. if uh, last night's minutes were a little bit of a shoulder shrug, what, what do you anticipate coming through on Friday? I, I think we've got to look at those numbers. Numbers. And if we still see a tight U.S. labor market, then I think that leans on the Fed still looking for higher rates over the course of 2023. And if that does, that might need to lead to a bit of U.S. US appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now, if we start to see anything out of the ordinary, I, th I think what we could see is some real whippy moves because you, you'll take, you know, maybe maybe it's a stronger a stronger number, and then that that will see the dollar uh, dollar rise. But then. If you're thinking that, well, okay, well, what are we going to see from the Fed on the back of that? We might see stocks get hit and then you're going to see some depreciation. So I, I think we're going to see volatility from it if it's anywhere around, uh, away from expectation, sorry. Um, after that, I think it's just one data point that we take into consideration before we, we it's not going to set a trend, let's put it that way. Um, and then we trade it and you, you trade what you see and, and really pay careful attention to those technical levels moving forward for the yeah, next. Yeah, and then we've got inflation. Is that sort of the next biggie? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think we, you know, labour market, inflation, the retail sales, et cetera, et cetera, will we'll, we'll flirt around it, but we're really going to have to see how they're going to affect the Fed. And it's, it's like we're saying, there could be a very dramatic turnaround, not just with the Fed, but with every central bank mm -hmm. by the time we hit the end of Q2 in 2023. Only time will tell, Nick. They will, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Nick Twidell there joining us from FP Markets.